and what are you doing else in, in your life? Well, I, I, thank you. Thank you, Steffi. I mean, I have two hats. On my day job, I run a great company called Publicist Live, based in Geneva. And we, are, we help uh, produce interesting global events like the World Economic Forum, among other things. Um, but I think it was partially related to that because we were doing a lot of work um, in the Middle East and Asia, and we were looking at the rise of new cities. And we felt very much that there was a need for a, a kind of collaborative platform that brought a lot of the stakeholders together involved in this. But uh, so that's, so I, I work quite a lot. Um, but Ule, that was an amazing presentation. It was absolutely breathtaking. And I, I go past the CCTV tower quite a lot when I'm in Beijing. And the interesting, I was really surprised by how big it is, by you're telling me how big it is, because it's such an elegant building uh, and it doesn't, it's not overwhelming. It's not a brutal building, so chapeau, it's an amazing thing. Um, speaking of beautiful buildings, I really want to uh, salute the Siemens. This is, Crystal is absolutely a uh, fabulous uh, place, an amazing example of forward and strategic thinking that we need in the world, um, and it's game-changing. Um, it's absolutely audacious, and thanks, Steffi, um, and the DLD team for uh, bringing your wonderful magic to this uh, discussion of cities, which is, I think is one of the most important discussions we can have. Um, I learned that I was to speak about cities as the promise of the uh, 21st century. That's a great title. Um, I would go further and say that uh, the success of this 21st century that we're living in now, and by ex extension, the success or the failure of our human species, uh, will depend on whether and how we can get cities right. I mean, I think it's that important, and that's one of the things that drove me to create the foundation three years ago. Um, this is the century of cities. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Um, just as the last century, you could say, was the century of the nation state, and I think we're kind of in, in a transition period between this world of the nation state competing with each other and the, the century of the cities. Um, and I think that that era of the, of the nation state that began in, in, uh, in Germany and Westphalia in the 17th century, that's probably uh, starting to phase now, fade now, and I think uh, as a kind of organizing principle of, of human beings. And we'll, we're seeing the extraordinary rise of megacities such as, such as London, um, and this is really where it's all happening. Um, as I said, we created and launched the New Cities Foundation about three years ago as a nonprofit uh, global platform that uh, brings together a lot of the uh, key actors from the public sector, uh, such as uh, municipal governments, from the private sector, uh, nonprofit uh, technologists, media, the research and academic community, um, who all share a common aim of making 21st century cities work and function better. Um, and that's really our mission. And from the beginning, the New Cities Foundation, as it's, our name suggests, um, had a very particular focus that I think sets us a little bit apart from some of the other initiatives in this area. And that is we do focus on new cities and new urbanization, um, and specifically in the so-called emerging economies. And we've seen this morning various graphs that point that out very, very well, that this is really where um, the uh, urban transformation of humankind is taking place at its most uh, uh, intense and extraordinary uh, way. And we've seen the, the numbers this morning. I think you, you know all about them, so I don't really want to repeat them. Um, but um, about the relentless urban transformation of uh, China, uh, where I was two days ago, and India, Middle East, Africa, Latin America. Um, by 2025, which is really tomorrow, uh, there'll be 100 new, city, new Chinese cities um, among, in the league of the world's largest cities. Uh, someone this morning made a reference to the new Indian cities in the corridor between Mumbai and Delhi that are going to uh, go up. And in every way, this is going to transform uh, all of our societies and all of our economies. And we, we do have to get it right. And that's what we're devoted to. 
just a couple of very, very quick thoughts. Um, what makes this process and this urbanization today different from, I think, every other cycle um, are two extraordinary factors. Um, one is, as I said, so much of this movement is taking place in the developing world. But it's not a developing world, and I hate using adjectives like that, but it's not a developing world that, that was your um, uh, father's and mother's or grandfather's and grandmother's developing world. This is a developing world that is fast becoming the motor of the world economy. It's a developing world with huge resources. It's a China with um, $3 trillion in reserves. So for the first time in history, these societies have the real means to, uh, to build things like the CCTV uh, tower in Beijing, like uh, the new cities that are going up in China. And that's a fact of really world historical importance, I think. So that's one thing, this center of the, of the gravity, of center of gravity of the world economy that's moving south and that's moving east. Um, at the same time, this transformation is happening uh, when there's an extraordinary revolution going on, which is the digital revolution um, that's affecting all of our uh, lives, our economies, the way we relate to each other. And it's brought about by the relentless innovation in, in, in ICT. Um, uh, I think Carlos amazingly beautiful slides uh, this morning kind of brought to life a lot of that in a, in, a, in a great way. And this trend of ICT pervasiveness uh, with its ability or the ability that we have to constantly access uh, networks anywhere in a city is a game changer. And I, I think it's probably a self-evident argument. But it means that urban dwellers whether they're uh, in China, in the United States, here in Britain, in Brazil, can access information related to energy, uh, to water, to city services, to each other, crime, what's on at the movies, etc., in a, in a really transformative uh, and fluid way. And uh, this digital revolution is making uh, the... Um, this urban world, a world of much more uh, intensive exchange of ideas. It's much better connected in multiple ways. And in some fundamental, fundamental ways, I think it really is going to turbocharge uh, human development in ways that we, we can't even realize right now. Um, Jeffrey West, um, who I guess unfortunately is not here today, Coal City is the, the single most important invention of mankind. Absolutely agree. And it's the idea that enables our economic potential and unleashes our uh, ingenuity. I think we have to remember that IT in itself is not a, uh, an end. And the digital revolution at the core is about facilitating human interaction. Um, and that's why people move to cities, um, to profit from the wealth of idea exchange. Um, and human collaboration, which can really only occur in an urban setting and when, when you have that kind of density. And as Jeffrey uh, has said, cities are all about the people. They're not about the uh, infrastructure. They're first about people and then about infrastructure. And um, you have this positive feedback loop of modern urban life, this sort of super linear pattern that I think was referred to earlier, where uh, a growing city becomes itself more productive, which encourages yet more people to move to the city and so on. And that's why whenever a city doubles in size, um, you get, on average, uh, if you look at almost every, any measure of economic activity, whether it's construction, bank deposits, uh, uh, things like that, increase by uh, at least 15% um, per capita. And studies show that as uh, the share of a country's urban population increases, um, the uh, total economic output per capita increases even more, much, much more. So <clears throat> for better for ver or worse, our, our urban uh, culture, again, whether it's in China or in the United States, I think frees people from many kinds of conventions and gives them the freedom and the ability uh, to think creatively. And I think that at the core is what urban living should be about. 
Um, and this is giving rise to an extraordinary culture of innovation and creativity. Look out the, you know, go out the, the door uh, here in London and you'll see that. Um, and I think that the 21st century, 21st century city, if we get it right, and we have to get it right, will be the cauldron of, of, uh, of, of, of a new human renaissance in the same way that the 13th and 14th century uh, urban uh, centers in Florence and Siena produced the first renaissance. So that's, that's sort of what we're working for, um, doing it very collaboratively with lots of partners around the world. Um, this, our foundation is all about collaboration and happy to welcome you uh, to it. So thank you very much. <laughs>